The era of gasoline-powered cars that you drive yourself looks like it's rapidly coming to a close. And it's not going to be because of government regulations or you driving your own car being banned. No, it turns out that electric-powered cars and self-driving cars are going to win in the end because they're simply superior, and people will have the choice between the two, and they're going to find that there's a lot to be said for not driving your own car and not using fossil fuels. And I have a few different... Uh, things in this area that I want to talk about here. Now, the first is why uh, electric powered cars being much more popular off into the future would be great for humanity. And so as we transition, this is something that you can look forward to. Uh, a couple more studies have now shown that electric cars actually do produce far fewer emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, carbon, things like that, even accounting for the electricity being generated in the first place. So Carnegie Mellon found that a battery electric vehicle powered with natural gas-based electricity emits 40% less greenhouse gases over its life cycle compared to a gasoline vehicle. It also found that fuel cell and compressed natural gas vehicles have life cycle emissions comparable to gasoline. So uh, significantly less emissions in that particular way that they're generating the electricity, uh, but fuel cells and other things like that actually don't really save that much. And so Toyota might want to think again about pushing for fuel cells rather than fully electric cars. But in addition, uh, today, plug-in electric ve vehicles are lower emitting than conventional vehicles, even when accounting for the emissions associated with producing electricity for them. Now, that is always what people who don't like electric cars, or think they don't like it, since I think they very rarely have any experience with them, will say. It's that, well, yeah, of course, the car is producing less emissions, but you have to make the electricity in the first place. And there might be some cases in which uh, it is actually dirtier. If you're just using filthy fucking coal to make your electricity in an area, it might be uh, dirtier in that way. But the average now is cleaner, regardless of how you uh, generate your electricity. And there are some areas where uh, it's significantly cleaner, areas that already have uh, cleaner uh, energy production. And that is only going to get better in the future, and this is my favorite part. Looking ahead, the GHD, that's the greenhouse gases, and air quality benefits of plug-in electric vehicles will increase as the electric sector relies more on cleaner generation. Uh, and I want to thank chargedevs.com for putting together some of these uh, studies. That is what's so awesome, is that gasoline is never going to be cleaner. You put the gasoline in your car, it's dirty. In 10 years, it's going to be dirty. There's no way to make it significantly cleaner than it is. But an electric car that I have today that's already cleaner than the gasoline cars, in 10 years, in 20 years, as we transition more and more to renewable power sources, my car will get cleaner as those technologies improve, something that gasoline powers cars can't, simply can't say. And so that is awesome. Now, in addition, it's not simply that it's good for the world that's going to cause people to move towards electric cars in the long run, to move towards self-driving cars. Right now, people say, well, you know, I get, I want to, I get it, I want to do good things for the environment, but the range is too short, and they're, they're too slow, and they're, they're too small. It, I just, I just don't like it. But that's going to be so different in the future, man. Look at uh, Elon Musk. Now, Tesla gets a lot of credit for making great cars, although expensive cars, uh, that have ranges of something like 250 to 300 miles currently. Elon Musk is predicting that by 2020, he will produce cars with 745 miles of total possible range, as well as fully autonomous self-driving technology. Now, does that mean that it's going to be easy to get the 745 miles? No, probably. You'll probably get something like five or 600. And will that be on every car? No. But that's already extremely comparable, if not superior, to what some gasoline-powered cars will get. And when we're talking about battery technology, this isn't just a Tesla thing. They make all their patents uh, freely available to other car manufacturers. So as they develop these sorts of things, other car manufacturers will be able to do so as well. And as we get more and more factories like the Gigafactory that's going to be producing uh, batteries for Tesla uh, up and running, the prices are going to continue to fall. And so it's not going to be a question of... Well, if I get an electric car, I won't be able to go as far. In the future, you might be able to go farther on the electric car. Uh, and, and for many cars, especially the cheaper cars, your car will be far uh, faster, better performance, because as I said, electric motors produce significantly more to torque. And then you have the added benefits of things like a quiet cabin that you don't have the engine noise, uh, significantly lower maintenance costs because the cars are mechanically far uh, much, much, more, much simpler, I should say. I'm just so excited about these electric cars, I'm stumbling a bit. Um, if any of you have had uh, a clutch uh, or a transmission or a radiator, any of these things that need to be replaced, it's extremely unlikely that there will be something to that level in an electric car. And so you'll save money as well. 
By the way, uh, once you move into the self-driving cars, you'll also be saving lives. Researchers estimate that driverless cars could, by mid-century, reduce traffic fatalities by up to 90%, which means that using the number of fatalities in 2013 as a baseline, self-driving cars could save almost 30,000 lives a year. That's nearly 300,000 fatalities prevented over the course of a decade, and 1.5 million lives saved in a half century. And that's, that's not just hypothetical. I mean, you've probably experienced people in your lives, friends, family members, perhaps, people that you've known who've died in car accidents. Those do not have to happen. Humans are inherently fa fallible, and we drink, and we get distracted, and we text, and so fatal car accidents happen, and non-fatal ones, which uh, have a significant toll in terms of who dies, who's injured, who's financially ruined as a result of the healthcare treatments that they then require. None of that needs to happen. And this is huge uh, cost savings that we are not, uh, we're not consciously factoring into what you'd save from electric cars, but our country and individuals will save a significant amount of money uh, from electric cars in terms of the emissions not causing rep respiratory disease and the self-driving cars not causing the accidents. And by the way, it says it's gonna save something like the average person 50 minutes a day if your car is being driven for you. Do you think you could come up with something to do with almost an extra hour per day? I mean, hell, you could sleep. You could go on your phone, bring a laptop, perhaps watch a movie, listen to some music, talk with your friends while not having to worry about being distracted. All of these things will soon be available thanks to self-driving technology. And that's just some of the advantages. I, I'm sure that you can come up with some as well. And that's what's so exciting. This is, these two technologies, uh, electric power and the self-driving technology are gonna be great for America, great for the world and they're not going to require great sacrifices. In fact, they could come with significant advantages.